Welcome back to the channel, The Real History of Football, Sheffield, the home of football. You are looking at the area just south of the centre of Sheffield today. I thought we might start this video by showing you the approximate locations of some of Sheffield's very early historic football grounds. See how many you can count. So that's 11, plus the two behind me, 13. All very historic association football ground locations where organised association football was first played and developed. All the grounds are concentrated in a very small area just south of Sheffield city centre. There were actually even more grounds that developed just after the period we tend to focus on, that being the early to mid 1860s. If you look at this map from Martin Westby's excellent History of Sheffield Football, you can see Norfolk Road, Crescent Road, The Farm and Machen Bank Grounds were all also in this view. If you are a regular to the channel, you will have seen these grounds on maps and footage from on the ground, but I thought it might be interesting to show you the panoramic view showing just how close many of these grounds were to each other. And, as I've said, concentrated in a small area of Sheffield just south of the centre. It's well worth a visit if you're in the area for a game. So welcome to the ninth video in our series. Up to this point I've been walking around the different parts of Sheffield where association football began, using the time to explain why Sheffield needs to be considered the real home of football. This time we are going to take time out to revisit some of the locations of the fourth video in this series. This video was in part an account of some of Sheffield's earliest clubs and so some of the world's very earliest association football clubs. I made that fourth video about two months ago now and since I've come across more information about some of the more hard to track down clubs and locations where they played. I also want to add to and in some cases challenge other theories about some of the history of these clubs presented by other football historians who may not have the advantage of living in Sheffield and the benefit of some local knowledge. Let me get my self-confessed obvious error out the way first from back in video 4. At that time I hadn't realised just how many grounds there were around the Highfields and Bramall Lane area. In my last video, video 8, I was tracking down our earliest hotel and pub teams. And I may have unearthed yet another new ground that was located near to Bramall Lane, Hounsfield Park. I believe Hounsfield Park was here, in the grounds of the Hounsfield family, who lived at the nearby Clough House. Milton and Wellington both played at Hounsfield Park. It seems there was also at least two more important very early football grounds I failed to mention in the early video four. The Cremone ground and the Orphanage. These very significant grounds are described more fully in this excellent walking app produced by historians at Sheffield Libraries. The app is of course called Sheffield the Home of Football. Let me try and explain more, but first let's have a look at where we are. So, regular viewers will know this area very well. We're in Sheffield, just south of the centre and just south of Bramall Lane. We started at the junction of Bramall Lane and Cherry Street. We were walking up Woodhead Road to its junction with Alderson Road and we're now walking up Alderson Road towards the Highfields area. In the past somewhere, I had read that the Highfield ground had in the past had different names. Highfields, Orphanage, Cremone, all names I fought for the same pitch. This is the pitch I wrongly called Highfields in video 4, 
Well, it does run straight through the middle of Highfield, so why would I question that? We are actually walking on it right now. The ground we were walking through in video 4 and are walking back through now, going up Alderson Road, was actually the Cremone ground. Of course, located just behind the Cremone pub. In November 1862, Milton played their first games here. Early accounts of their first game apparently influenced the formation of Notts County, which if true would mean Notts County would have formed very late in 1862 and probably more likely early in 1863 actually. Other historians have concluded that there were actually two other grounds around the Highfield area that were also used by early clubs. A few yards south of the Cremone Gardens ground down London Road, Sharrow Lane turns off west. Just up Sharrow Lane we find this old building which was in the 1860s the location of the Cherry Tree Orphanage. Somewhere south of this old building in its grounds was the Orphanage ground. I don't think it's hard locating the approximate location of the pitch which I believe would have been on the flatter area where today we find Mount Pleasant Road and Ward Place. This was an incredibly important ground since it was used as one of the five grounds for the first round of the 1867 Yodan Cup. Wellington, Mackenzie, Garrick and Milton all played here on the 16th of February 1867. The two matches here on that day started competitive association football. There should be at least a plaque at these five ground locations to acknowledge what came after the events held here. The FA Cup, the World Cup, the Champions League, etc. Tournament football had a birthplace and this was one of the birthplace venues. Just across London Road from the orphanage ground was Highfields. This was Sheffield Wednesday's first ground. Highfields to ground is actually more in the area of Lowfields, hence my earlier confusion in video 4. It was here, as I've said, almost opposite the orphanage. The pitch sat in the location where Highfield Library and St Barnabas Church now occupy. I'm not sure if the terrain was any different in 1867, but this does seem a very steep area for a pitch, and it's no surprise that Wednesday left here to move to Myrtle Road just a few years later in 1870. Let's just take stock of those free grounds and where they were. On the old maps, the free grounds were here. So Cremone Gardens ground was directly southeast of the Cremone pub on London Road. The orphanage again southeast of the Cherry Tree Orphanage, and Highfields was opposite the orphanage across London Road. Today, those three locations are Cremone here, Orphanage here, and Highfields here. I make that seven historic football ground sites in this small part of Sheffield by 1867 and only a short walk away we also had at least three others at Norfolk Park, Myrtle Road and Mearsbrook Park. As we have already said a few years later we got even more grounds in this area such as Wednesday's Olive Grove, Surrey FC's The Farm Ground and Sharrow Rangers' The Crescent Ground. So that's our grounds around Highfields update and corrections all done. Let's now switch to look back and learn more about four early Sheffield clubs that all also played in the very first association football tournament we mentioned a few minutes ago when looking at the orphanage ground and the early matches of the Oden Cup. The clubs we are going to look at more are Broom Hall, Mackenzie, Pittsmoor and Fir Vale. Broomhall and Mackenzie both came from the area just west of Bramwell Lane towards the bottom of Ecclesall Road. Milton, another Yodan Cup team, also may have come from not far from the end of Ecclesall Road, making this also an interesting historical football area if you visit a game in Sheffield. While we talk more about these four early clubs, we're going to take our second walk of this video between where two of these clubs originate from, Broomhall and Mackenzie. On the map, this is where we are now on Collegiate Crescent, next to Hallam University and the old Collegiate School site. Broom Hall and its grounds were towards our left. We then cross Ecclesall Road and go through the back streets to Sheffield General Cemetery. 
then down through Sharrow to finish at the bottom of Mackenzie Street here. Broom Hall FC formed in 1863, and as we said back in video four, from Broom Hall, which still exists. We believe Broom Hall was another cricket club inspired team, typical of many early Sheffield football clubs. If you recall in video four, we weren't certain of Broom Hall's ground location. We concluded that they originally would have used the grounds of Broom Hall, which at one point were open right down to the edge of Eccleshall Road. Westby agrees to a point by suggesting they could have at least practiced on these grounds next to Eccleshall Road. So why did they not also play here? The terrain is slightly sloping, but I've seen worse. The collegiate school ground was just over the road. As you can see, there is even a tennis club here today, so they can't have been that steep back in the early 1860s. I think Broom Hall would have played matches here, but due to building pressure in this area, at some point that would have forced them elsewhere. But where? Westby suggests Broom Hall's main ground for many years was three miles along Eccleshall Road South, but this would have taken you two and a half miles out of then the town boundary, which was at Hunter's Bar. It would have taken you all the way to remote Werlow. I don't understand why the club would, in the days of limited transport options, choose to take its players, oppositions, club members, spectators, etc. this far out of town for games, when other better options existed nearby. The best other ground option was just a third of a mile up Ecclesall Road. It was here at the Ecclesall Road ground. We know Broom Hall played here in 1867 in the first round of the Yodan Cup on the 16th of February 1867, making it another of those five hugely important grounds where competitive tournament football kicked off for the first time ever. For the record, the other grounds are Norfolk Park, Sandygate, Norton and of course the Orphanage. We know the Eccleshall Road ground still existed when Oxford SC played here from 1869 to the mid-1870s, so why not Broom Hall in the later 1860s? Also, the Hunter's Bar ground existed all through the 1870s up to Broom Hall's demise in 1880. So why not use this option less than a mile away? Maybe they did, but records are just lost. I think the more likely explanation is Broom Hall did, as we've said, in 1863 play at Broom Hall, but building pressure moved them out and down to Eccleshall Road. When the Eccleshall Road option went in the mid-1870s, and again due to building pressure, they may then have had their final years out at Whirlow, as Westby suggests. And they did this in an attempt to survive and still have somewhere practical to play at. The terrain in between Hunter's Bar and the far end of Eccleshall Road South is very steep, very steep hills going up towards the Peak District, which explains why Broom Hall may have had to go out this far. Also, by 1867, we know Door FC had formed, and they played a mile further out of town either than Whirlow, so the Whirlow location is plausible when no better options existed. Although Broom Hall's grounds went out southwesterly, the administrative base was actually back towards the town centre here at the Crown and Anchor pub. This is the location of the Crown and Anchor, which would have been at the top of Bright Street. Bright Street no longer exists. It was also opposite the bottom of Fitzwilliam Street. The pub would have been right in front of where this lorry is. Interesting, John Charles Clegg, the first chairman of the English FA, played for Broom Hall in 1869 as his first club. Broom Hall lasted for 17 years up to 1880, as we've said, a relatively short existence, but they certainly made their mark in football history. We briefly mentioned Pittsmoor FC of 1861 and Fervale FC of 1862 in video 4, but we failed to tell you where the ground was. And they did actually for many years share the same ground. It was actually at Pittsmoor Cricket Club here in North Sheffield. 
This is actually the current location of Sheffield United Football Club's academy. I wonder if the young players here know the location's footballing history. We can't pass this spot in Sheffield General Cemetery without visiting this grave. This is a very spiritual and holy place as far as association football history is concerned, as this is the resting place of Thomas Yoden, the creator of competitive association football. Without him, you would not have the FA Cup, the Champions League, the World Cup, or the inspiration for competition between clubs in leagues. Up until Yoden, clubs played for just wages, fitness and mere pride. If you want to find out more about Thomas Yoden, please see video 5 in this series. A quick correction to video 5, Thomas Yoden was not Irish, but he was actually from Street Fort near Doncaster. We concluded back in video 4 that Mackenzie FC of 1862 came from the Sharrow area just west of Bramall Lane. This is where Mackenzie Street was and still is. There was a pub at the bottom of Mackenzie Street where the members most likely met and this pub was called the Washington. Again, like me, I guess, Westby isn't sure of this. He suggests they came from a cricket club, but could this cricket club have played near the top of Mackenzie Street as we suggested in our fourth video? around this area here. Again, Westby suggests the club could have come from a road out towards Broom Hall called Mackenzie Crescent. Mackenzie Crescent was, and still is, a tiny cul-de-sac with just four houses on it. And as I've said, it was in Broom Hall. It seems unlikely that Broom Hall, already having Broom Hall FC, and highly likely having Milton FC nearby, could accommodate yet another quite large football club of 500 plus members. Sharrow makes more sense for Mackenzie FC. It's also an area where there were no other clubs in 1862. Also, if you study Mackenzie FC's first four honourable secretaries, they all came from around the Bramall Lane area from Clough Bank, from George Street, which is now Boston Street, and also Thomas Street. And so generally near to Sharrow and the Mackenzie Street area than Broom Hall. Two of Mackenzie's honorable secretaries actually came from the George Hotel pub on New George Street. So that's all the four Yodan Cup teams we need to examine more closely, all finished. Broom Hall, Pittsmoor, Furvale and Mackenzie. There's one other non yodan Cup team I want to mention in order to correct an earlier assumption. In video four we said Exchange FC was formed in 1863. But later in video 5 I realised that Exchange had been invited to enter the Cromwell Cup of 1868. The Cromwell Cup was only for recently formed teams and so Exchange can't really be any older than 1867. The date 1863 may have come from the Exchange Cricket Club who played at Hyde Park in 1863. Exchange FC most likely came from the Cricket Club. I also said in video 4 that I didn't know where Exchange FC's ground was. It was called Hallam's Farm, but I had no idea as to the location. Well, I now do, or at least I'm a little closer. Hallam's Farm was the farm grounds of Joseph Hallam, who lived at Park Farm in the park area of Sheffield's East End. Park Farm was just off Cricket Inn Road, around about here. This is the location today. The farm stood where this car park now is, beside Hyde Park Flats. My best guess for the pitch was in the field to the east of the farm, near to the Cricket Inn Road, which was the flatter part of the area. That would put the pitch here where the flats are today. On the current day maps, the farm location is here. The pitch was here, the cricket ground was on the hill just now where Manor Oak Gardens now is, and the High Park tram stop is straight opposite. Let's finish this video with an interesting extra. 
In video 4 we mentioned that Sheffield FC played Hillsborough Barrack soldiers at least twice in 1858 and 1860. Well we know from Cresswick's personal diaries they also played them a third and fourth time it seems around the same time, around the 12th of May 1859. By some people's standards, this would make Hillsborough Barracks an organised club, playing regular games. By our standards, of course, they weren't. On that point, it will be a good point to end this video, since in our next video, I will be asking that very question. What is a football club? If you have enjoyed the content, you know what to do. Like, subscribe and leave a helpful comment, please, if you have one. Till next time.